Introduction to the T-Statistic, Chapter 9, Question 15. Standardized measures seem to indicate that the average level of anxiety has increased gradually over the past 50 years. In the 1950s, the average score on the Child Manifest Anxiety Scale was mu equals 15.1, a sample of n equals 16 of today's children produces a mean score of m equals 23.3 with a sum of squares equal to 240. Based on the sample, has there been a significant change in the average level of anxiety since the 1950s? Use a two-tailed test with an alpha of 0.01. The first thing that I recommend that you do is you pull out all of the information that you have from the word-based question, the word problem, so that you don't have to keep reading and rereading the question. So it states that mu equals 15.1. That's the mean that was in the 1950s. Now we have a sample of 16 with a mean of 23.3 and a sum of squares equal to 240. Step one of the hypothesis testing procedure is to state what are our hypotheses. To do this, we need to know that it asks for two-tailed test. So what we're doing, we need to have our null and our alternate. These two need to be mutually exclusive and exhaustive. The null is that there is no difference from the 1950s, so mu is equal to 15.1. The alternate is that it isn't equal to 15.1. These are mutually exclusive and they're exhaustive. They're two-tailed and we always write our hypotheses in terms of the expected population values. Step two of the hypothesis testing procedure is that we need to find our critical values. To do this, we first have to find our degrees of freedom. Our degrees of freedom for a single sample t-test is n minus one. So we've got a sample of 16 and minus one is 15. We're going to use that to go to the back of the book to table B2. Now over here, we're going to find 14. And our alpha level was 0.01, I believe. Alpha was 0.01. Two-tailed test, we go to B2, we go 14 across, full portion and two tails combined, and our values are uh, 2.947. Sorry, 2.947. So, proportion and two tails combined, Alpha 0.01, we go across at 14, and we get that 2.947. So T critical. Step three, we calculate the test statistic. So the first thing that we need to do is calculate the variance because we got the sum of squares. So we're going to take the sum of squares and we're going to divide it by n minus 1. So 240 divided by 15 and that's equal to 16. We're going to use that variance and we're going to plug it in to find the estimated standard error. So we take 16 divided by 16 and we square root it. 
Now we're going to take this estimated standard error and we're going to plug it into our T formula. So the mean was 23.3 subtract 18.1 divided by 1 8.20. Step 4. For step four, we need to compare what we calculated in step three to the critical value in step two. So our critical values were, this is plus or minus up here in step two because it's two-tailed. We have 2.947, negative 2.947. Anything that falls in here is going to be failed to reject. Anything that falls out here is going to be reject the null. Our value is here. So our decision is reject the null and accept the alternate. The evidence or the reasoning behind that decision is right here. So this is evidence. And I want you to take it a step further and interpret. If you reject the null, that means that there is a significant effect. Significant difference from the 1950s. So this is A. In question B, I will uh, be calculating a confidence interval.